fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of a great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. There's danger on the trail ahead. I'll silver! Boy! In the town of Mountain City, Ma Collins managed the Great Western Fur Warehouse. In her home, the middle-aged woman was talking to John Maitland, the town marshal. Of all the scheming, conniving tricks, that one by Tom Turner beats all. I hope the coyote stays in jail till it turns uh, green. The trouble is, Mark Collins, I don't know who's going to bring the charges against him. What do you mean? Well, the warehouse he burned was the Webster warehouse. The only one that's got a real complaint is the Webster company. Well, sakes alive, he tried to burn Jim Blake and the Lone Ranger with the warehouse. Yeah, they can square him out of that charge. Yeah, but he tried to make the hunters think they'd lost their furs in the fire so he could have the furs and not have to pay for them. But the hunters have got the furs back. Do you mean to say that after all the scheme and Turner did, the only charge against him is burning the warehouse? Well, that's about the way it is. Then there's something wrong with the law. <laughs> I won't argue that point. Won't Webster himself file charges? Well, he hasn't so far. I've been expecting to hear from him. Webster's never showed up around here, has he? No. He keeps in the background and lets an agent handle the Mountain City end of his business. He's got warehouses all over the fur country. Well, what if Webster won't bring the charges? Uh, then there's not much I can do about Turner. I have to let him go. Of all Oh, the... I know, Ma Collins. You think maybe Webster's afraid to bring charges again, Turner? Well, that's the way it looks to me. I think Turner did just what Webster told him to do. Oh, uh, is, uh, is Madge around? Oh, so that's it, huh? You called to see Madge. Well, uh... <laughs> Go on, admit it, Maitland. Oh, of course, I'd like to see you, too, Yeah, but, but my daughter's more your age, huh? <laughs> well, it's all right with me, John. Have you spoken to her yet? Spoken to her? Oh, go on, I can tell when I see a man in love. Same goes for a girl. I don't think Madge exactly squints when she looks at you. Well, do you, do you really think she cares something about me? Why don't you ask her? Oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you, Maitland, you better speak up quick. You've got a rival in these parts. Uh, I have? Ever since the fire at the Webster warehouse, Madge has been talking about the Lone Ranger. Oh. If that jet was to walk into this house right now with Madge here and start talking, I bet she'd just go limp. I never saw a girl admire a man like she does that one. Well, maybe I should get me a mask, huh? Oh, I'm not worried, huh? <laughs> no. I guess the Lone Ranger is a heap too busy to spend time talking to pretty girls. Is she still around here? Well, I don't know as to that, but I bet if there's any more deviltry like Tom Turner tried, he'll show up a plenty quick. Mo, well, between the two of us, the Lone Ranger is trying to get the goods on Webster. On Webster? That's right. Has Webster busted any law? Well, not that can be proved, but 
He was in this some sort of organization that threatened to undermine the government. It was called uh, the Black Era. Uh -huh, he was, huh? The Lone Ranger knows that, but he can't prove it. That's why he wants to see Webster jailed. He don't care what it's for as long as Webster lands in the calaboose for a long time. Well, I hear a horse being reined up. Maybe that's Madge. Golly, maybe it is. Does, does my tie look straight? Oh, sure, your tie's straight. And the park your hair is straight. Oh, that can't be Madge. Well, I'll go see who it is. Set yourself down again and wait there. Oh, howdy. What can I do for you? I'm looking for John Maitland. I heard that he was here. Well, that's John Maitland sitting over there. How do you do? Well, howdy, ma'am. May I come in for a minute? Oh, sure, sure. Step in. Sorry for not thinking of it myself. You're the town marshal, aren't you? Yes, sir, that's right. You have a man locked up in jail? Mm-hmm, two of them. One named Turner, the other called Butch. His real name is Laughlin. Uh, you're a stranger around here, aren't you, miss? Yes, I just arrived. Well, the train's not due for a week. I drove a buckboard from Craig's Bluff. Oh, uh, reckon you got there by stagecoach, huh? Or maybe you live in Craig's Bluff. No, I don't live there. Oh. What'd you say your name was? Well, my name doesn't matter. I, uh, well, well, you can call me a messenger for Mr. Webster. Mr. Webster? Of the fur company? Yes. Oh, sort of a rival of mine, huh? Oh, no, please don't say that. Did you have business with Turner and Butch? Why'd you ask about them? I suppose you haven't heard from Mr. Webster about them yet. No? I didn't think so. That's the reason I came. What are the charges against them? Arson. They set fire to the Webster warehouse. They did a lot of other things, too. They tried to swindle everyone around here out of the furs. They tried to kill the Lone Ranger. I, I heard about that. I suppose the Lone Ranger has gone away from here now, hasn't he? Well, we haven't seen anything of him since fire. But he's not far away. You can bet on that. How do you know, Marshal? I've heard about the way the Lone Ranger works. He'll know what goes on around Mountain City. And if there's any more scheming by agents from the Webster outfit, he'll show up mighty sudden. Webster agents? Right. The first one is in jail for keeps. The second one, that's Tom Turner, he's in jail awaiting trial. If Webster's got the nerve to bring charges against him. Mm, I see. You said something about being here for Mr. Webster. Yes, I'm here to act for Mr. Webster. Uh, can we go to your office, Marshal? I reckon so. Now? Right now. Come on, miss. Tom Turner and his accomplice, Butch, sat in the jail discussing the chances of going free. Turner was much more confident than Butch. Webster won't make a move against us, Butch. Don't you worry about that. Are you sure? Webster's got to do something, or everybody will think he was behind the burning of the warehouse. He was. The whole thing was his idea. Yeah, but he can't let anybody know about it. Webster'd see our next stretch and think nothing of it. We don't mean anything to him. Oh, we don't, eh? Well, do we? We do. How's that? How do you think I got my orders? About burning the warehouse? Sure. I was told everything we was to do. I was told how to raise the price we paid for furs so we could get all the furs that honors could get together. Then when it was all in the warehouse, it was to be taken out at night and the warehouse set fire to it. I know, but when you figure that... And I got all those orders in a letter from Mr. Webster himself. You did? Sure. <laughs> and I kept that letter. You don't think I'm fool enough to burn it up like it said, do you? You still got it? I have. And in a safe place, too. Let Webster file charges against us and see what happens. I'll make him wish he hadn't. Doggone, Turner, you got more sense than I thought you had. Someone just came into the other room. Yeah, like it's John Maitland. Maybe so. He's coming this way. Sounds like his steps. Yeah. Is that you, John? Yep. Yeah. Well, how you doing here in the jail? Well, not bad. But you can't keep us here much longer. No? Why not? What are the charges against us? When do we get a trial or don't we get one? Maybe you can't find anyone to appear against us at the trial. How about that? You got to try us or turn us loose, John. You know the law. Oh, you boys will get your day in court. Don't worry about that. Uh, we will, huh? And I suppose Mr. Webster is going to accuse us of setting fire to his warehouse. That's it, boys. What? The bill of complaint is all made out. Oh, but I can't. Where is Webster? Oh, he didn't come here in person. He sent an agent. Someone to take my job. Oh, well, I'll... Take it easy, Turner. You won't do a thing. You're charged with enough to jail you for ten years. He can't do that. He can't get away with that. Let me out of here for a minute. Just let me out for a little while. That's all I ask. I'll show him a few things. Now, take it easy. Easy nothing. Let me out of this place just long enough to get something. That's all I want. You can go with me. You can send a dozen men to guard me. Turner? You're here to stay, and that's that. And, Butch, 
The same goes for you. I won't do it. I'll get out. I'll get out and make Webster change his mind. I'll get out of here if that's the last thing I ever do. You listen to me, John Maitland. I'm telling you, Webster's to blame as much as I am. You pay for what he does to me, he'll pay ten times over. <laughs> That night, Tonto went to the camp in the woods where the Lone Ranger was waiting. The Indian brought a report from town that surprised the masked man. Webster's really going to go through with it? That's what feller in town say. Turner plenty man. Him say Webster double cross. Did the Webster come to town? No. And then who did? Well, uh, Tonto not know. Webster agent come. Tell Marshal to press charge against prisoner. Well, I suppose Webster had to do it. I didn't think he would. I wonder if Turner will tell anything about Webster. Well, me not know that. I hope Turner might have information that would prove that Webster was giving all the orders. That's what we're after. Now, I guess... What matter? Well, Webster has kept himself in the clear. There's nothing against him, or he wouldn't have dared turn against Turner. Uh -huh. I wonder if... What's the matter, Silver? Oh, uh -huh. me go see. Daddy boy, what is it? What do you hear? Him look to West. You sound that way. Can you hear anything, Tato? Oh, me not hear anything. Wait, listen for a minute. Steady, Silver. Look that way. Light over there, through trees. I see a Tato, a fire of some sort. It get bigger all the time. Plenty big fire now. Plenty big fellow. We'll have a look at it. <coughs> Come on, Silver. Get up, Scout. Fire's burning fast. Keep back a little, Tato, in case it's a trap. Ah, uh, me not see anyone near fire. Neither do I. But look at it burn. Pull there, Silver. Oh, Steady, big fellow. Hold on, hold That fire was set to attract someone. That's no campfire, nothing but brushwood. That's right. That boy's a girl. I hear her running away. Uh, me go no, find no, Tonto. She doesn't want us to follow her. Wait till I see what's on the message. She's tossed to us today. Wrapped it around a rock. Uh, what, what message say? She's helped us so many times in the past. Now she's followed us all the way down here from Deadwood. Uh, Tonto, I'm afraid we're in for a lot of trouble. Oh, we have plenty of trouble other times, too. But this, this is something I don't like. John Maitland is a marshal. He's in charge of the jail. Isn't that right? The men who help him guard the jail are all good citizens. I don't like to fight men like that. We fight them? We've got to let them shoot at us. We've got to pose as friends of Tom Turner and his partner, Butch. We've got to get them out of jail. And when we start? As soon as we can get ready. Town, while the shadows of night surrounded the jail, John Maitland spoke to two of his friends who were on guard. Turner's desperate, so keep a sharp watch. There's no telling what might happen before morning. Now, don't worry, John. We'll be on the job. I'd like for something to happen. Only those two would try to bust out of the jail would have a good reason to start shooting. Don't take any chances at all. If there's any move made to get him out of the jail, shoot. I'll be right across the way at my house. I'll come on the run if I hear a shot. Right. And there's one thing more. I don't know about the friends of the prisoners. But you can be sure they've got some. I reckon so. There's a plenty of men that work for the Webster Fur Company. Maybe they've got friends among them. Be on the watch for men outside the jail as well as the two that are in. We will. All right. Then I'll be... What is it? Jeb, look over yonder. Right between my house and the one next to it. You see anything moving there? It's hard to tell. It's pretty dark. I see something. I see it now. Me too. <laughs> Jeb, Jeb! I got him! I got him! He's fouled! What did you shoot for? We don't know who it is. You shot! Well, whoever it is, I got him! <laughs> there won't be no jailbreak while I'm on guard! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. When the Lone Ranger received a message from the mysterious girl, he realized that it would call for all his skill to get Tom Turner and Butch out of the jail without hurting John Maitland and the other guards. One of the guards, seeing a moving figure between two buildings, suddenly fired his rifle. The figure dropped to the ground. Maitland and the others ran toward him. Haven't found it yet. You shouldn't be so handy with your shooting iron. Well, anyone that's around the jail at this time of night's got no business here. He wasn't around the jail at all. He was across the road between a couple of buildings. Well, got no business here either. Uh, here he is. He's flat on his face. Hey, looks like a redskin. Wish there was more light here. We can't see how bad he's hit. Can't even see if he's someone we knew. Here, we'll take him inside my house. Pick him up. Jeb, you take his feet. Right. I'll go ahead and open the door. All right, Kit. <coughs> He's plenty heavy. Hang on now. If I do say so myself, John, that was mighty fine shooting I done. I wouldn't have believed I could hit him. You had an old jib? Why'd you have to be a crack shot now of old times? Well, the fact is, John, I didn't mean to hit him. I fired to scare him more than anything. Figured that if he was on the level, he'd say something. Otherwise, he'd clear out. I might have known it. If you wanted to miss him, you should have aimed at him. You never hit what you aim at. <laughs> if I did, I'd turn hunter. The door's open. Watch your step now. Careful of him, Jeff. I am. I'll strike a match and see if I can find the lamp. Right under the window on the table, kid. Right, I'll get it. Right. See what's it? It's trouble outside. Let this man to the floor. Hurry up, Jeff. Down. You gotta see what's going on. Pull out now. Hurry. Jailbreak is jailbreak. You hear that jailbreak? Come on. Turner's out of the jail. Well, there they go. They got horses. The men are coming from the cafe. There they go. Oh, well, they got away. Somebody helped them. Look at the door of the jail. It's wide open. John! John Maitland, where are you? Where's your guards? That ornery polecat busted out of jail. There wasn't a chance to overtake Turner and Butch. On horses taken from the hitch rack near the cafe, they raced out of town and before anyone could start in pursuit, were lost in the night. Dejected and bitter, John Maitland had nothing to say in his own defense. He turned toward his house with Mark Collins at his side. Oh, I don't hold you to blame, John, but hang it all. Oh, no, there's no use explaining how it all happened. If I was to blame, Ma, you can hold it again me for shooting the man. You? Who'd you shoot? He's in my house. We was just about to try and patch him up when the trouble started. Well, kids, you go on and light the lamp like you started to do. Right. I'll have it going in a second. Careful where you step in the house here. The wounded man is in the middle of the floor. One second now. You don't know who you shot? No, ma'am. It was too dark to see, and we didn't have a chance to look at him. Well, here's the lamp. I... Well, where is he now? Jumping Juniper. He's gone. Where was he? Well, right here in the middle of the floor. But he's gone now. Where'd he go? No sign of him at all. Well, I don't see no marks on the floor. He couldn't have been wounded very bad. What's this? Huh? Something here on the... Great day, John Maitland. Take a look. A bullet. You likely fell from the critter's cartridge belt. Take a close look. That bullet didn't drop by accident. That there hunk of metal is called silver. Silver? A silver bullet? You mean the man we... The one Jeb hit? Ma, Kit Jeb. Could it be that the Lone Ranger was here? <laughs> Next day, John Maitland came to the home of Mark Collins with a grim expression on his face and a folded piece of paper in his hand. He closed the door behind him and spoke directly to the point. I'm looking for the girl that was here yesterday, Mo. Have you seen her? Uh, not since yesterday. Why? I want to talk to that girl. I've got some mighty important questions to ask her. There's some funny business going on here, and I don't like it. How about Tom Turner and Butch? Have you got any trace of them yet? No. Well, now, where do you suppose I'm they... not looking for them anymore. I called in the men. After them escaping from jail like they did, John Maitland, why don't you I'm go ahead? more interested in finding that girl. You dead sure you haven't seen her? Well, I told you I hadn't. Uh, she sure dropped out of sight mighty sudden. Well, what's the trouble? What's she done? That's what I want to know. I want to know why she came here saying she was a representative of Webster and ready to file charges against the men in jail. Well, but This you... is a telegram from Webster. Oh, what'd you say? When I couldn't find the girl this morning, I sent a message to Webster to see if he knew anything about her. He didn't. Webster didn't know about her? Not a thing. And what's more, he don't intend to make trouble for Tom Turner. Says that he hasn't the time to come in and bring the charges against Turner. Oh, sakes alive. That ought to prove that Webster directed all the things that Turner did. The burden of the warehouse and all. It don't prove a thing. But it seems to me Mark that... Mark Collins, a warehouse was burned down. That's about all that happened. 
We can't prove any attempted murder. But burning down the warehouse That was a be... crime against the Webster Fur Company. Webster's the one that has to file a complaint. If he won't do it, we can't hold Turner and Butch. Oh. His refusal to file a complaint is reasonable enough. He's a busy man, a mighty busy man. And time is money to him. He figures that sending Turner to jail won't get back the warehouse, so there's nothing to be gained by it. And I can save you there. But an ordinary schemer like Turner running loose and at large. But, John, it's downright dangerous to the community. Perhaps they don't give a hang about the community. He's thinking of his pocketbook. Thinking of his neck, if you ask me. He's scared that Turner will tell a few things about him. That's why he's willing to let Turner go free. Well, that's neither here nor there, though. What I want to know is this. Where's that girl and why has she come here saying she was from the Webster Company? What was her scheme? Uh, doggone if I know. Say, did you hear anything further about the Lone Ranger? No. But it was a silver bullet that was found in your house last night. It was. Well, then... Oh, shucks, I can't make head or tail out of the way things have happened around here in the past 24 hours. Seems like they must all hitch up some way, but I can't figure out. Excuse me a minute, John. Maybe that's the girl. Yes? Oh. Um, me want Marshal. Uh, John. Redskin. Say, I've seen you before. <laughs> you you see me last night. You come plenty close to shooting me. Well, then you're the one. Uh, Great guns. I thought for a time you was dead. Oh, me play possum last night. But what? What dread it you might have been killed. Oh, fella, not good shot. Hunter not take much risk. You come now, huh? Lone Ranger want you. The Lone Ranger? Uh. Lone Ranger, John, he wants you. I'm with you, Tonto. Come on. And get other fella, too. Maybe two guards. The two guards? You want them, too? Uh. Jeb and Kit. I'll get them right away and be with you in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Ma, if that girl shows up in the meantime, you tell her to wait. I want to speak to her. I'll tell her, but I don't guarantee she'll stay around. Oh, uh, girl not come back. You know? Ah. Uh. Her work finished here. Her go away now. Maybe never come back to Mountain City. Now we go out. Uh. I'm right with you. Let's shove off. <laughs> In a cabin some distance away, Turner and Butch sat behind a heavily barricaded door. On the table close at hand, there were several rifles and three pistols, together with a lot of ammunition. The windows of the place had been boarded up, but small slits had been left, through which the two might fire at anyone who came too close. We can make a stand here if we have to, Butch. Yeah, but for how long? And if we was near a real town, I wouldn't figure we had a chance. But you know what Mountain City's like. Nothing at all through most of the year. The only time there's anyone in town is when the trappers and hunters come in with the furs. I don't figure there'll be much of a force to come and get us. Maybe no one at all come. And we'll stick around for a time and see. Then if we see our chance to slip away, well, we'll do it. Just let me get this letter to Webster in the mail, and then we won't have anything to be afraid of. That devil-crossing snake. Can you imagine him bringing charges against us? He likely figured I wouldn't save his letters. <laughs> well, I did. He better watch his step. I'd still like to know who helped us get out of jail last night. It was probably some of the Webster men who didn't want it known who th that they was with us. Uh, good thing we had a lot of guns and rifles stored away here. Yeah, right. What's the matter? I heard a horse. Yeah? Take that window. I'll peek through the slit in the door. See if you can see anyone. Right. Hey, Turner, look here. Who is it? John Maitland. Maitland? How'd he locate us? Take a look. He ain't alone. Kit and Jeb with him. And that redskin. That's the Indian friend of the Lone Ranger. Butch, what are they doing here? Can't you guess? They're after us. Well, I'll give them a reception. Stand back. Wait. Don't shoot them, Tilly. They'll give them a murder charge against us. I'll just warn them. That's a warning. We're armed in here and we don't come out. Uh, hang it all. How'd they locate this hideout? They want you, Tony. You better give up. Not on your life. We can drill you from here, Maitland. And you can't get a shot at us. Clear out before we open fire. You don't have a chance, Tony. No? Then try and come after us. Just you try it and see what happens. They're not coming. They're just standing there. We can stand here as long as they can stand there. Don't turn. Stay where you are. What? Turner, he's behind us. Stop those guns. That's a masked man's voice. You're captured, Turner. Give up and you'll be given a fair trial. I take the barricade off that window and be quick about it. No tricks. He, he can't be here. It's a trick of some sort. Hey! Don't oh, oh, pull you got to turn. He's outside. He's got his gun through the slit in the boards. That's right, Butch. You forgot that the slit you left can be used to fire into the room as well as out of it. Take down those boards. And do what he says, Butcher. Yeah. I just got to mail to Webster. Well, I'll bet we won't be in jail very long. I uh, hope you're right. Now, well, get out that window. We're going, we're going. Don't fire again. Thank you, Turner. Just keep your hands where they are, Turner, and you won't get hurt. Take over, Mason. Are you a prisoner? We got him. We put ropes on him, Prano. I reckon you critters don't have much for thinking. 
You never realize that we come into view just to draw you two to the window so the Lone Ranger could cover you from the other side. <laughs> How's that for tying, John? You know, hold that one. <laughs> Stand aside, Butch. Yeah. Look, Turner over. We were tricked. As neat as you please. Get the horses, Toto. Uh, me get them. Turner, I suppose you'd also like to know who let you out of jail. Yes, I would. The Lone Ranger let you out, Turner, just so you'd go after that evidence you had against Webster. Search him, boys. We you... sure will. Keep your hands up, Turner. We'll see what we can find. Double cross. You see, the Lone Ranger figured that you might have something against Webster. Figured that maybe he wouldn't file charges against John O'Connor. We have. You got the letters. Here they are. Well, I can't take credit for it. It was the idea of a girl who came here and made out that she was an agent for the Webster office. And that Webster was going to bring charges again you. That made you mighty sore. <laughs> and now we'll see what comes of it. Here, Silver, Kimotabi. All right, Toto. Get ready. Huh? Get ready now. How about it, Maitland? Now have you evidence? Well, of all things, these letters aren't signed. Not signed? No, they're addressed to Turner, all right, but Webster was too smart to sign them. Maybe he had someone else write them, too, so they wouldn't even be in his handwriting. And we haven't any We pro can't prove a thing against Webster. But we got one thing. What's that we got, John? These letters are sure enough proof that Turner and Butch planned to set fire to the warehouse. And they're proof that they schemed to get the first from the hunters without paying for them. They're not proof of anything if Webster don't appear against us. Oh, yes, they are, Turner. Without him, we wouldn't be able to prove anything. But with him, and with this letter you've written to Webster, you're as good as jail for keeps right now. Hello, we still have to get the head man, silly big boy. Come on, Webster's the one we want. Get him up, Scout. Get him up. Oh, silver. Hoy! you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>